years, and this is nothing fancy. How's the temperature? It's hot. What? You're hot? <laughs> I'm in black on the water. Wow, I am surprised. She's usually freezing, especially in the Zodiac. There's no wind though right now, it's nice. No wind, we're on fresh water today, not the Pacific Ocean, not the bay. It is about 77 degrees and it is a beautiful day. The wind has not kicked up yet. And it's a good time, good place, location to review the entire Zodiac Futura Inflatable Boat Series. There's your butterfly friend again. Yeah. She's been attracting butterflies. Probably with your shirt. They probably like your shirt. I'm so sweet. <laughs> Excuse me. Some pollen in the air apparently too. We're in Northern California. This is uh, Oroville Reservoir. That's what we're in today. And it's gorgeous. There's a long haul coming up here. But this is the place I want to take the boat. Check it out. Test some gear and review the boat. Heads up, this review will be about an hour long. It is not a lightweight review. We're gonna encapsulate a lot of philosophy in it, a lot of details, unlike all the other boat reviews you have seen on the Zodiac Futura series. I'll see there are none that I've seen. There might be a couple videos from Zodiac proper, Zodiac France, but they're not really reviews. They're just kind of, I don't know what they are, the five minute promo pieces. So we are long time users of the Zodiac Futura series. We sought the boat out because we liked its capabilities and we were okay with its cost. This is the second Zodiac Futura boat we have owned, true or false. True. It does come in three different sizes, the Mark II C, the Mark II, and the Mark III. This is a Mark II that we have now. The Mark II is 13 and a half feet overall length has 20 inch tubes, I believe, 225 pounds with the aluminum floor. The Mark III, the bigger one we used to have was about 14.9. Uh, it was actually longer because we had the old pointy end tubes that the current Zodiac features have the rounded end tubes. That one weighed 256 pounds, uh, and then with the Air Force, 180 pounds. I'll give you more details later, maybe. We went with this uh, smaller version because there's less people. Our boys are mostly grown, gone. And so it's either me alone, me with a TMP, or me with a crew member, me with a wife, just two no, people. One so the Mark II is In perfect. that order. It's tagged. That's correct. <laughs> the wife generally is not with me. Look at that freaking big boulder, by the way. That's awesome. And a tire. This area, by the way, experienced huge flooding. They drained the, the reservoir down this year. Uh, to alleviate some pressure on the dam, which almost breached. But the spillway eroded the whole bottom. They have to redo it. Yeah. So there was some drama here earlier. Great place to review the boat. So about an hour long, maybe a little bit longer. Uh, it's not It's not really for TMP Nation. I don't think there's a lot of boat enthusiasts in my current tactical audience. It's for the internet as a whole and any serious buyer for super capable, high quality, inflatable boats, again. It's easy to look at this boat and go, well, you know, I could buy something like that off uh, Amazon, maybe a Saturn brand boat, which I think are great, but this has capabilities that a normal inflatable boat doesn't. It has patented features. I'll get to those here as we move along. And it'll just be kind of a raw on lake boat review. And we're gonna take you a lot of places because we've taken the boat a lot of places. I might roll some footage at the beginning, at the end, showing oceanic operations, bay operations, maybe some vintage footage with the boys when we had our Mark III doing whale watching excursions in San Juan Islands. Ran it in both Priest Lake and Idaho. We ran at uh, Roosevelt Lake, Spokane, and a bunch of other little bodies of water for the years. True or false? True. Should have never sold that boat. I was stupid. Shouldn't have done it. Should just kept it. But I sold it to a dude that took it down to Mexico and runs it with his family. And that original Mark III Futura is still in operation today. Which brings us to the point. These boats will last. Um, I won't say forever. There's, it depends on how you store it. If you store it in the sunshine or in a marina, uh, you're going to have some wear and tear. And they, they ain't, ain't going to last that long. It's a hypalon, not a hypalon, but a PVC glued boat. Uh, I'd say if you take care of it and shelter it, it'll be just fine. And it won't visit durability again. But the boys, and this is nothing fancy, are not really water people. True or false? True. 
true. So you don't like the water? Well, it's alright. <laughs> you like it now though, don't you, with it being warm? Yeah. Is it because you're usually freezing cold is why you don't like it? I don't know. I grew up with a boat, but I was never a water skier. Hmm. With that a transition there, let's talk about philosophy of use of a Zodiac feature boat, whether you get a Mark II C, the smallest, the two, the mid-sized this one, or the Mark III, the largest one. What you need to understand about this is this is a fully inflatable boat. This is not a rigid inflatable boat or rib. It does not have a rigid fiberglass hole on the bottom. It's fully inflatable and we have opted for the aluminum floored version of it. There is another one that has the HP2 floor, which is a high pressure inflatable floor that is pretty stiff. It's excellent, it's comfortable, but it doesn't allow the motor capacity and it doesn't provide the rigidity of the aluminum floorboards. That fully inflatable thing is important because if and when you get tired of your Zodiac Futuro, you can actually deflate it. It is a process, it is work. Roll it up and store it in a freaking closet. True or false? True. We did it for years. And then you put it together and you get good at putting it together and it doesn't take up space. What we found out is when we use a boat a lot, we just leave it put together, we buy an inexpensive trailer, and that's how we haul it around. It's kind of cool as we float around the rocks here. So a fully inflatable family boat is what you need to know. Uh, think about that and contrast it against something, and guys have rolled in the comments, hey, you should get this boat, you should get that. Dude, I've looked at all the options, and at this point, I'm not saying I never would, but this is the boat, that, or the kind of boat that suits us. I will probably go with a rib next. Probably a Zodiac Pro Open 550 or 650 would be the next boat purchase. And I'll tell you why I'm big on the, the inflatable boats as we progress. But knowing that if and when you don't have the room, you move, you don't have the storage, you can totally roll it up and it would be your all around family boat when you need it. A lot of guys use the Futura boat as a dive boat, scuba diving, abalone fishing. I think most of them, though, are not willing to spend money on the Zodiac Futura, and it's expensive. It's a French-made boat, and everything French-made is expensive. With the exchange rate, this is not a boat you can just walk into Cabela's and buy. You have to order it. I mean, this boat was ordered from Inflatable Boat Center up in Oregon, and I'll put their contact information there. And the description, you can tell them nothing fancy sent you if and when you will be interested in buying one. Yeah, it's not available everywhere. And it's, but it has a lot more capabilities than other boats. And I might as well roll that in right now. Um, one of the capabilities the Futura has is, uh, are the speed tubes. And I'm going to roll in footage right now as I walk around the boat. And you'll see that there's actually three inflatable tubes on the bottom of the boat. There's one in the center keel. That's common to inflatable boats. Then you have one on each main tube, which by the way, I believe in the Mark II are 20 inch tubes. They might be 22s. So they're big inflatable tubes, able to carry bigger, heavier motors. But what those speed, speed tubes do is the boat rides on those, not the main tubes. That minimizes drag. It improves ride comfort. It soaks up bumps. It gives more directional stability and allows you actually to take on some pretty gnarly conditions in a fully inflatable non-rib boat. That's pretty epic. So those are called speed tubes and they are patented and they're only available on the Zodiac Futura. So if you were to go out and get another boat of another manufacturer, maybe like a Saturn from Amazon or something, which I think is a good boat, it just wouldn't have the capability of a Futura that can take it out in the ocean in the bumpy waves of which we've done lots and lots. Now, that being said, it is a sit-down configuration, not stand-up like you would have in some of the other Zodiac offerings, like a Pro Open. And if it gets really bumpy, it can hurt your back. Yeah, True yeah, or false, Mrs. Ned Fancy? True. So the boat's capable, but you're probably not going to like the ride. Unless you're really young, and it doesn't bother you. <laughs> well, we went, but we took the Mark III on the west side of San Juan Islands in six-foot waves that one time. Yeah, we're the only boat out there except for one oil tanker. Yeah, I wish I had footage of that. If I find it, I'll roll it in. I don't think we had a camera going because it's too gnarly. We didn't have, like, GoPros back in the 90s. It was just a handheld VHS recorder. Yeah, true. We had a boat pull up beside us and gave us the look. You remember that guy? He's like, what the hell are you guys doing out here? We had me, Mrs. Nut and Fancy, Tactical Doodle, and Baby Last Suspect. I bet you we had some good five-footers. Oh, yeah, they were five huge. Five-footers. And 
and we, we made it, didn't we? The shore, yeah. We went all the way around the periphery of San Juan Island and the San Juan Islands safely. Uh, and that's what the, the speed tubes will do, the big tubes, and also the deflection strakes. Check this out. So the Zodiac Futura has these deflection strakes, which deflects water from coming into the boat. There are a couple other inflatable boat designs that have similar stuff, but it's rare. I haven't seen a lot. And that keeps it very dry in the cockpit, even when the ride gets pretty rough. Flossy of use. I gotta run because there's just so much cool stuff to talk about about this boat for people who are interested. Uh, Tinder. So you can haul it off the back of your, your yacht. <laughs> you have a ton of money and use the Zodiac Futura. When we're in the San Juan Islands, we pulled to the dock. You remember this guy? I thought we were rich because they thought this was our tender coming off our multi million dollar yacht. True story. Uh, we tipped them good. They watched the boat while we went on the island and got something to eat with the boys. Uh, I think it'd be perfect for that. A lot of uh, I wouldn't say a lot, but a couple fire departments, ones that know about the boat and its capabilities, will use the Futura series, maybe a Grand Raid, as a rescue boat, as a surf rescue boat, maybe some lifeguard stations. Uh, it has there are some old ones around that you'll see on beaches occasionally, the Futuras, because they're, again, they'll last a long time. Uh, along with that evacuation boat, uh, when I got my Mark III in the 90s, I called them. I actually ordered that one directly from Zodiac America in the day because there were no online places I could buy it. I had to buy it direct from Zodiac. And he said there was a dude in a Mark III down in the Bahamas or somewhere along that they did a hurricane evacuation. Remember that story? They had 12 people in the boat and they went over like eight foot waves and got away from the island and got them to the main rescue boat. Cool. Uh, you got to understand too, the quality of Zodiac is pretty high. Like. Anything that's going to have its quirks, there are some criticisms I have the way Zodiac does things and they piss me off, but overall the package is excellent, the quality is superb, and again you're paying for it, but for a bo boat you may own for the rest of your life, Sorry, or if you decide to resale and it will keep its still resale down. value, totally worth it. As a point of reference, Jacques Cousteau, in his research vessel, they use Zodiac for the sea operations for many, many years. It is a genuine Zodiac product, albeit Zodiac probably sponsored them. Are you so hot you're going to take a little dip there? Just put my... Cannonball it right now. No. Take your iPad, iPod cold. off and cannonball. It is cold. <laughs> uh, another thing about the Zodiac Futura, which is sick, is that it can beach easily. There are regular boats that can do this, um, but this is so lightweight, it's so easy to take aboard. It, and any of these beaches, I mean, these are steep, rocky beaches that we can't really demo it here. But on any normal beach, just rock the motor up, and as long as you don't have waves to contend with, it's easy to bring ashore. So easy. A lot of clubs use the Futura. It's like sailing clubs, boating clubs, for their speed, they're fast, they're stable, and uh, their beaching capabilities. That's our POU. I hope you liked it. Got a cruise. How about advantages over the real boat? Now, I mentioned some of these already, that you can store it, you can wind it up, and again, we're going to be watching footage as we've operated this boat all over the place in the last year. And again, I'll see in comments, hey, you know, you should get a real boat, do this. Uh, the, the first thing you need to understand about a real boat, so to speak, where you have a bilge pump, where you have a gel coat, a fiberglass hole, is cost. Usually, if it's an inboard motor, it's going to be extreme, extremely high cost. B-O-A-T, bust out another thousand. This Zodiac Futura paired up with an Everwood E-Tech 30 is cheap, cheap to own cheap to use. Our cost today running this all day on the lake is we pay $13 for parking fee and then we have we'll have about $10 in gas spent. True or false Mrs. Minton? True. Yep. Plus the gas to get here and food and stuff that but I'm talking actual operation. So basically $25 for a full day out on the water. You compare that against a boat that has engine problems that will have cracked gel coat and all kinds of other stuff that it will need. It's expensive, dude. You're gonna save a lot of money. It's a fraction of a real boat, so-called real boat. Remember this, too, payload. So here we have a boat that weighs roughly uh, 200 and, what I say? This one is 225, 225 pounds. Payload is 2,450 pounds. Am I saying that right? 2,425. It can carry 2,400 pounds. That's awesome. 
It can carry a lot of weight, though. Uh, there have been expeditions that have used Zodiac boats for years to carry cars across, like, rivers that don't have bridges. I think I have a photo of that somewhere, like a bull cloud and bug. So that gives them a lot of payload capability for hauling a lot of gear, a lot of people, and it'll make them super safe and super stable. Try that with a real boat, trailability. You don't need a special vehicle to tow this. You can do it with your freaking car. You get a big old boat, you might have to buy a vehicle too. There's water coming down that drive, by the way, you can hear it. Uh, we talked about its roll-up and storage capabilities. Try that with a real boat. So if you have a real boat, guess what? You get tired of it, you run it for like two years and you go, you know what, we don't want it anymore. Well, it's not going anywhere. You gotta find a place to store it, probably in your backyard, or you have to pay for storage. Uh, this has way advantage over that, totally. It's much more stable in the way. You can actually stand up on these top tubes and fish out of it. Uh, like I said, a lot of guys use it for dive boat. It's much more stable than a regular boat because it's basically a balloon sitting on the water. I'll start the motor up, up and take it out of here again. There you go for a sec. I love how stable these things are. They are awesome. Love this E-Tech motor. Like that? Yeah. Like it. Sitting on the tubes when you're running your Zodiac is super comfortable. I mean, it's kind of like a padded seat right now. It's a whole different way of boating. You just got to get used to it. Another thing I love about the boat is that it's so rare. You don't see a lot of Zodiacs running around. The only one you'll see on this 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 body of water all day is us. That's it. You just don't see them around. So if you guys like to run something that's, I don't know, uh, different, you know, cooler, Futura, man. What are you laughing at? It's that way. Cooler? Well, it is cool. I mean, it's different. And there's a lot of times I'm putting it in the water and guys will come up and go, what is that? In America, in Europe, and other places in the world, Zodiacs and inflatable, bo inflatable boats are almost the standard. I mean, they use normal boats as well, but in America, Zodiacs are rare, especially a really bright red one like this. It stands out. It's different. I, I, I think it's totally cool. Um, but the stability is amazing. Uh, you are closer. Here's some disadvantages. Uh, one is cockpit space. Because you have 20 or 22 inch tubes, there's not a ton of room to put stuff. You'll have a big old bow bag. And I've adapted a Mountain Smith bag for that. Go see my Oceanic Emergent, uh, Ocean Survival Equipment video for that. And you can see we kind of run out of cockpit space. We've got a cooler here, battery here, fuel tank, some extras, pads, and there's not a ton of room. Downside. It is what it is. You can't have everything. Uh, so there's little storage. The seats are pretty basic. We strap on pads to them. I don't like how Zodiac pads the seats. I think they're inadequate. I'll probably roll in some photos of what normal pad looks like without anything strapped on it. It's a sit-down affair only. You can't stand up to soak up the waves. So you can get your back door like we said earlier. Uh, it might be slower than a regular boat. I mean, a regular boat can, you know, go pretty good depending on what motor you got on it. With this E-Tech 30, we'll do about maximum 27, 28 miles an hour, and that's being re -popped. That's as fast as I can get out of this boat. If you go to Mark 3, the larger one, it will go slightly faster. If you're lucky, 29 miles an hour. Is that fast enough? Um, I would say to do what we want to do, it's plenty fast, don't you think? Mm -hmm. It gets you places, and again, you're getting about 90 miles out of a tank of gasoline, which is insane. I mean, if you're like full bore the whole way, not so much, but mostly you get about, you know, 80 to 90 miles out of the tank. Uh, disadvantage, so close to the water, even though it has the flexor scrapes, you can still have water come into the cockpit when you get big waves splashing. It does happen to us frequently. I'm getting I don't know if it's the juice. best fishing boat. Yeah. <laughs> Guys will watch my videos and go, why don't you go fishing in your boat? Well, here's the answer. First off, uh, oh, yeah, you know, we don't want to climb the boat up. And it's, and to before catch my lease, we wouldn't keep the fish. No. Throw them back. We might do it later. No, I won't say we won't do it. But for now, we don't do it. And plus, there's not a lot of attachments for, like, you know, fish finder, rod holders. In my Mark III, I had rod holders on the transom in the back, and they worked okay. 
but it's just not an ideal fishing rig in a fully inflatable boat. Like a bow mounted trolling motor, for instance, like instance, like you'd have on a bass boat. Those are nice to have, but I don't have room for it on this one. Uh, kind of a bummer. Uh, putting your registration numbers on a hassle. I have some clip on plates that I use. They're not on right now, obviously, but a lot of guys will paint them on. These are the stick on letters. That's by the way, that is the name of the boat, Cool Boy Proxy. And I got those from West Marine. Uh, I think they're on Amazon too, and I just stick them on. And you can put your registration on that way. So those are some disadvantages. I think though overall, advantages of a real boat, it's night and day. Uh, you will have to decide, by the way, when you get your Futura, do you want a tiller steered motor or do you want a console? Which do you prefer, Mrs. Nut Fancy? Because we've had both. Yeah, I like the other way. The console I like driven? this way. Yeah. I kind of like the tiller a little bit because it's so simple. It's easy and it doesn't take up room. Because we had, the Mark III had a tiller arrangement in it. Not tiller, but a console. It takes up room. Um... It is more complex. You have steering cables running down the side of the boat. It was more comfortable to steer, though. I'll give you that. This is harder. Yeah, she has rheumatoid well, arthritis, too, that's though. That's why. <laughs> so keep that in mind. I, I kind of like the tiller. It's it's pretty simple. Um, I could take either one and be totally happy. The question you might want to ask is, am I going to be taking the boat down ever? If the answer is yes, go with the tiller steer for sure. Uh, you might put some thought into which motor to put on it. On our Mark III Futura back in the 90s and the early 2000s, we had a Honda 25. That was a great motor. We are really happy with it. It was, again, a remote steering application with manual tilt. This one is just tiller, manual tilt, obviously. 30 horse, so 5 horsepower more, but it has a lot more torque. The torque of the Evernote is really nice because it allows you to do what I call wheeling over waves. So when you come across waves in the ocean or something, you can actually gun it and it will wheelie the boat so you kind of do a wheelie over the back side of the wave so your bow doesn't slam down. I'm not making that up. It really works. It's a great way uh, to minimize impact to the boat and the occupant. And I've shown it on camera a couple times. I'll try to roll in some footage if I can find it. If not, just take my word for it. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Uh, the Avenue E-Tech 30 is an oil injected motor. So there is a container underneath the cowling that I just keep filled with oil and it doesn't go through very much oil. It's very minimal. And I like that because it, it's a four star EPA rated. So no, no oil into the water. This body water, for instance, it would be illegal to bring any old two-stroke motor in here because it leaves an oil slick. This one's clean. It's EPA rated and it's totally clean. And I love it. And it doesn't go through a lot of oil and I don't have to change the oil. So it's less maintenance too and the overall skinny thing. But I would probably put at least a 30 horsepower on it for performance. If you're going to be taking it down using a primary for a fishing boat, uh, by the way, this boat could tow water skiers and uh, uh, knee boarders, true or false. We, we did it with a Mark III with a 25 horse, and you'll see these stainless steel screws right here are set up for towing arrangement. And those that come with it, I put those in. This is a speed to inflator valve on the back, by the way. Just so you know. 